Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today I want to talk to you about code reflection in Game Maker Studio. Now I'm not talking about drawing reflections such as uh, uh, maybe having a sprite reflecting in the water or anything, nothing like that. Uh, what I'm actually talking about is allowing code to inspect other code and in fact itself. Now that can be used to change the structure of the code at runtime to achieve more flexibility within your code, make it more maintainable in the future. Actually, is this good practice? Now, in most programming languages, we would tend to avoid this because there are better alternatives such as uh, interfaces and uh, annotations that are available, making, uh, giving for better uh, alternatives. However, in Gaming Studio, there isn't really much of an alternative and it does make uh, a lot of the code nicer. So. How does reflection work in Game Maker Studio? Well, it allows you to get a list of scripts, objects, etc. Uh, and it's important to remember that scripts and other assets are actually uh, represented by numbers in code, uh, from, often from zero to the number of the asset minus one. Now, it's important to note that this could change in the future. Uh, right now, Game Maker Studio does keep it from zero to, uh, say, five if you had six scripts. Uh, making it easy to iterate through. However, none of the documentation actually guarantees this. So uh, it's important to note that this may change in the future. Uh, however, if it does change, it will make uh, a lot of this quite a lot harder to do. So it also allows to get the names of your resources based on the IDs you can get, which is what will allow you to decide what to do with the code. Finally, it also allows to execute your scripts and create objects and so on. Uh, which is actually making use of inspecting the code. So uh, it is something that you must make sure is that checking if those IDs are valid because it's very possible that you will end up uh, on invalid uh, resource if it gets destroyed and so on. So why would you use it? It seems like you know you can already do pretty much uh, everything you would want without reflection, but it allows you to run scripts based on name, which is great for testing, for example. You may have a series of scripts that, are, that start with name test, for example, test uh, area, test player functions, and so on. And you may want to run those automatically without having to explicitly say in your code, uh, run all the, all the testing methods. And uh, it's also great for indirection, which is the process of executing different scripts based on the different uh, implementations you have. And if you go check my video on object orientation, I talk more about it, especially with regards to polymorphism. So you can also assign resources to objects dynamically. For example, you may have uh, spray sprites that you want to change based on the state of your object. So your object may have an idle, a running, a falling state, and so on. And you could use this system to uh, assign your scripts dynamically based on the number of uh, on the different number of states you have. It can also be used to change the resources based on rooms, uh, such as paths is a good example. You may be making a tower defense game with paths that your enemies will follow. And for if you have a room called uh, room level one and a path called path level one, you could automatically detect that path level one should be used in room at uh, level one and so on with all the different rooms, uh, making your code a lot more maintainable. It's also quite nice for making consoles. So you may want to create objects and run scripts and so on. Uh, when the user types in a, uh, a function, a script, uh, which is uh, quite nice for debugging purposes. So how do you actually go about finding resources? Uh, in Game Maker Studio. So the first method that I'm going to show you is listing. And uh, it's very nice if you want to find resources that don't have a specific name, that have maybe a prefix and so on. So um, the, the, this is the script that, uh, the general idea of the script, where you first loop through all the indices that the scripts could have. So uh, from zero to whatever, and the way you stop is by using script exists. So this will return false if the script does not exist, uh, therefore stopping the loop. You can then get the name of the script using script get name, which will uh, be what you will use to determine what to do with that script. The second uh, way of 
finding resources is through searching. So you could have a set name you're looking for. Uh, in this example, we have a SCR player move. And first of all, what you would do is check if this script actually exists. And this asset get type actually allows you to do two things in one. First of all, it will not it will return asset undefined or unknown if uh, the script if the script doesn't exist. So uh, you'll be able to find out if you actually have this asset available. But also quite importantly, it will tell you what uh, if this script, if this asset is in fact a script, it could be an object. Uh, so just to make sure, we make sure it's a script, like so. Uh, we can then of course get the index, which is what we're actually going to be using throughout our code to execute the script and so on, using asset get index. Now it's important to note that there are equivalent functions for all other resources, allowing you to do the same kind of operations on objects, sprites, and so on. So now that we have the theory out of the way, let's have a look at how we can actually write it uh, in Game Maker. So what I have here is a simple project with just two sprites in the room I set up in advance. Uh, I'm just going to create, uh, first of all, an object. This object will contain all of our, all of our uh, reflection code. Now what I'm going to demonstrate today is how you can get uh, execute different scripts based on the name of your object. Now, the example I'm going to show today is not going to be very useful. However, again, if you go check out my, uh, my tutorial on object orientation, it will make a lot more sense as to when you may want to use such a system. So this first object I'm going to call obj underscore parent because as the name says it, it's going to be our parent object. What we're going to do is add a create event and in this create event, we're going to find the scripts we're looking for. So the script we're actually going to be looking for is going to be the name of the script, name of the scripts plus uh, underscore step. So we're looking for a script uh, of an, that is, for example, uh, let's write it down. If we had obj underscore foo, we'll be looking for a script called obj underscore foo underscore step. So the way we want to do this is first of all define the name. So we can say var name is equal to uh, the name of the object, which we can get using object underscore get score name and our object index. And we add underscore step. So this line simply defines the name we're looking for. Next, we actually check if this asset exists. And if you remember from the slides, we used asset underscore get underscore type. And we get uh, the name in here. Now asset get type will return uh, asset underscore unknown if there is no such asset. So by writing is equal to asset underscore script, uh, we're able to both know if this is equal to a script, if this asset is a script, and if it exists at all, which is really quite useful. We then find the actual script uh, by saying script is equal to asset underscore get underscore index and the name. Now, if we don't actually find uh, an asset, we want to make sure that we set the script variable to undefined. Like so, uh, such that we can make sure we did find a script when we try to execute it. So this script will find us the script we're looking for. We can now add in the step event, a even shorter piece of code which will first check that we did find a script using if script is equal to, sorry, is not equal to undefined. Like so. Then, so therefore, if we did find a script, we want to execute it using script underscore execute script. We can then uh, spell script correctly and press OK. This is it for the parent script. So again, this will find a script. Uh, this object will find a script which 
uh, starts with the name of this object followed by the uh, underscore step and every step will actually execute that script. So we can press OK here and create two more objects. So we want to use two objects in order to uh, show the difference between uh, the two. So the first one we're going to call obj underscore foo and we're going to make sure it has a parent of obj parent and we're going to select the correct sprite and that's all we have to do. And the second one we're going to call obj bar and again uh, set the correct parents and the correct sprite. All that's left to do is actually create the scripts that the parent object is going to be looking for. So the first one is uh, obj underscore foo underscore step and what we're going to do is just rotate the object. So image underscore angle is plus equals let's say 4. And on the second one, we can add a different behavior. We can do uh, image underscore angle minus is equal to two, for example. And just to make sure we see the difference, image underscore x scale is equal to, let's say, two plus uh, the sign, the d sign of image angle. And make sure to name your script such that um, the parent object will find it. So obj underscore uh, bar underscore step. Now all that's left to do is go inside our room, place our two objects like so. And I just wanna go into the view just to make it a bit bigger such that uh, you can see on your screens. So let's press run and hope that I didn't write uh, any mistakes. Hopefully it should run fine. And as you can see, we now have uh, two objects behaving differently, even though inside their events there is well, not much difference. You know, they're both parented the same objects. Now it may seem in this example uh, like it was a, a lot of effort for, well, not much. However, it does get a lot more useful uh, if you have more objects perhaps states for your objects. Uh, maybe you have also, um, uh, maybe you wanna use the same script for multiple objects that will do different things. Uh, again, if you go check out my video on object orientation, the bit about polymorphism uh, can be implemented in this way, which uh, truly can really make your code a lot clearer uh, not within the actual uh, reflection code bits, but outside of it, as it, there's a nice simple interface that you essentially create. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and have found it useful. If you have, please give it a like, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.